It is different from all other wars of the past, not only in its methods and weapons, but also in its geography. It is warfare in terms of every continent, every island, every sea, every air lane in the world. The Japanese onslaught in the Far East meant enormous demands on the Royal Air Force, and to reinforce our worldwide battlefronts, a ceaseless flow of new machines is delivered to aerodromes up and down the country. Wellingtons, Hudsons, Blenheims, bow fighters, and many other types. At the same aerodromes, crews are receiving their final training to equip them for the day when they'll be handed a brand new aircraft to fly halfway around the world. They will be needing topes, khaki shirts and pants. Quite a pleasant prospect on a cold English morning. They need parachutes too, and special life-saving jackets, just in case, because a lot of their journey is going to be over the sea. Weight is all important. Extra petrol comes first. A copy of Gone with the Wind, for example, might make the difference between landfall and the drink. Air crew who will fly through a heavy anti-aircraft barrage without turning a hair have been known to wilt in this chamber of horrors. It is the weather which finally decides when the aircraft can take off on their long travels. At group headquarters, a senior officer of ferry command consults the weather expert and decides that the forecast looks good for more reinforcements to get away in the early hours of the following morning. So a signal is broadcast over the teleprinter, authorizing their departure. The order is received at the station. The crews assemble in the briefing room and the Met Man explains in detail the kind of weather they may expect to meet on the first leg of their journey. A detour may be necessary to avoid a bad patch. Headwinds may use up the petrol. The station commander comes in to say goodbye and offer a few words of practical advice. What we want are whole aircraft the other end. It's no use flying the first thousand miles and then bending it at the edges, so take it slowly. But with the greatest care in the world, spare parts and stores are going to be needed and they've got to be there just as soon as the planes. So a giant American Liberator is loaded up and will fly them all the way. While the briefing is going on, ground crews are giving the aircraft a final look over and making sure that all petrol tanks are filled to the brim. The engineer officer is called in to give advice on an engine which does not seem to be behaving quite perfectly. The navigators get together to plot their courses. It's a tricky mathematical business, even with the aid of these scientific instruments. Hence the worried expression. Remember, if he gets his sum just a little bit wrong, he may end up in the wrong continent. Two more important items before going to bed. It's going to be unpleasantly cold way out over the sea, so the wise man lays claim to a thermos. It wouldn't do either to miss the early morning crew bus, so call times are chalked up. The alarm clock is an extra precaution. And so to bed. While the crew sleep, their thermos flasks are filled with the hot coffee and sandwiches packed for the long trip tomorrow. Almost before it is light, the ground crews start the final check over. Meanwhile, the air crews tumble out of bed and into their flying kit. Sausage and bacon, very important this last English breakfast. Tomorrow, it may be prickly pears or bird's nest soup. All the same. The time for takeoff is at hand. Engines must be warmed and running smoothly. But even then, accidents may happen so the Air Sea Rescue Lizzie is brought out of her sable and a special inflatable dinghy tucked away under her spats. Breakfast is finished. The mess secretary is taking no chances. There's no calling these lads back. One last hopeful look at the letter rack. Please see that he's not disappointed when he gets to the other end.
The fitter just has time to satisfy himself of every detail as the crew bus draws up. The pilot warms up the engines. The rear gunner makes sure that everything is working smoothly. You never know who you may meet. It will be many hours before these legs touch ground again. First away is a bowfighter the most viciously armed of them all, and then a Wellington. The long procession of bombers and fighters has started. Another bow fighter, a Hudson, yet another bow, a Blenheim, a Wellington, a giant liberator. The control tower signals them off. Righto, Hudson, all clear. Plane after plane sweeps gracefully into the sky and down the long air lanes of the world. Up they go, their noses turn seaward. One last look at England, and then it's southward bound to fight side by side with their comrades on the battlefronts of Asia and Africa. Goodbye, and good luck. <laughs>